And today is our uh, capstones for for COVID um, live stream. And what we want to talk about is just different. Uh, well, let me, let me give you some context. I feel like people might be confused about what exactly is going on here. So, you know, when Nim and I started Full Stack a long time ago, we, you know, the first thing we recognized is that we get to work with a lot of people who are very much about transforming, I mean, at least themselves, right? Like they're going through an intensive um, bootcamp process to really come out the other side, like a, a, a very different person, at least from a skill set and, and career trajectory perspective. So we know that there's a lot of um, strong imperative in our students and our alums to try to help out. And, you know, we really admire that. We've always admired that. And we want to support that. And, you know, I think one thing that a lot of people feel right now is a little bit just uh, helpless in the face of something of this um, this COVID crisis, right? And I think that um, that... We want to do what we can, and one of the things that we really like is this site called um, HelpWithCovid.com, created by uh, Sam Altman. Or I don't know about created by Sam Altman, but really popularized by Sam Altman. Really, with ideas, crossroads ideas, and teams trying to help out with the COVID crisis, right? Different ideas, different um, different websites, etc. And so um, we thought, hey, let's take a. We want to take a look at some of these and see which ones might be good projects for our students to, and our students and our alums to work on. Um, so yeah, so this is the live stream. If you have questions, we're happy to to answer. If you have a project idea that you want to get our thoughts on, happy to jump in on that as well. And um, you know, a few a few caveats. And you know, um, one is that you know this is. If you want to just help with a project on help with COVID, like join the team, that's that's perfectly fine, right? Like I think that's a great option. A lot of there's a lot of energy in that site. I think um, observable right away about uh, what people people are really interested in working on. So don't feel like you have to do it with a full stack group or a group that that uh, you create through full stack alums. Um, you know, I think it's one of those things like a thousand flowers will bloom, and the things that really help in people are the things that are going to be going to resonate and stick. Uh, two is you know like. I think a lot of us are uh, in the mindset of, you know, measuring things by kind of numbers from the business world. And here, I think really try to get in the mindset of, of measure whether or not you're winning by the impact that you're having on people, right? There's oftentimes won't be a, um, you know, we're not saying here, go find a startup idea, go try to way to make to monetize. This is really about, you know, I want to help people. Um, I want to, I want to help. And these are ideas for you to, to help others with. I think that this is the um, this is the the perfect situation where um, you don't need where where good is better than great, right? So like you can you know in in a in, in a normal startup situation, you would be building out an app with every um, kind of crease ironed out. You have the the forgot password set up. You have you know all different um customer service related things set up like here uh we have a emergency crisis going on um i think we have an opportunity to really build um use the skills that we have and that we've learned to build tools that can help people right away um and so i think that you know that's a really cool opportunity actually as somebody uh who's a developer that um you know, some of the some of the more um, boring stuff in development is all the stuff that that um, you have to do to create like a really long term um, app for you know for like a large business. But if you're really trying to just solve a problem, you can do that very quickly. And the other thing I would say, you know, not to not to be um, not to joke too much, but Nim and I have sat through how many say? probably a thousand or more capstone idea presentations, right? And so many of those, it's, you just want to say like, look, this is a great project idea, but don't, they'll say, they'll, they'll soon come to say, you know, is this a business idea? And it's like another event app, another ticketing app, um, another like setup for a social situation that you're just like, this never happens. Or, or like a bill splitting app, you know, how, you know, how many bill splitting apps have we Seen our students do, which is which is cool. I mean, they're cool capstone projects, um, but oftentimes they're it's very hard to dislodge a default social behavior, our default 
um, incumbent in the space. Now, what I would say here is that this is a unique opportunity because for the first time, like we're we're all all the default social incumbents have been dislodged, right? We are in a world where you could launch a new event app and people will use it, right? People will use something that's different. Uh, you could launch a ticketing app, um, and we have some ideas later that we want to share that we think are amazing ideas. Um, and it would never work in any other time except now. And so if you, and I think the one thing I would say selfishly for people who are want to work on this stuff, if you're really making impact on users and you have people going through your site and using it, it's an amazing feeling. It's like, it's, um, it just, it's yeah. such a powerful feeling of impact in the world, right? That you've taken even a from small your code. number of, even just a very small number of people, right? I think like when you launch yeah. a business, you we always talk about scale and and um, and and um, you know just like getting a ton of users. Like here, um, any amount of impact you can have, whether it's in your local community, whether it's in your uh, your your country or your area, um, you know, it, it will be very appreciated in the current environment. You know, I heard something, uh, and I never really understood it. Um, or you know, maybe the whole goal of life will be to understand something like this. But it was like the most selfish thing you can do is to help others, and I think that's that is um, true in this sense of that if you if you can do something that can help others, I think that would be a, a great way to not only just deal with the, the feelings of helplessness we all have, but to um, really fill our kind of our own soul of, uh, of you know as programmers the work that we do. So, yeah. you know, I do want to make one caution as someone who has built several healthcare applications. It's if you're going to do something that is involves health information and personal identifier information, you're crossing into a lot of regulatory space, like with, with HIPAA being the minimum level. Um, so HIPAA, you know, the general idea is that you have to be very cautious with people's personal identifier information if you know anything about their health information. So uh, we're not healthcare lawyers. And I paid a lot of money to healthcare lawyers to tell me all kinds of subtleties. So if you're going to collect information like on things like who has what stuff, um, just be aware that there are legal steps that you are um, going to cross into. So um, we're not making any recommendations here for anything where it's like type here if you you know want to have symptoms and create an account kind of stuff. Yeah, I would say that you know to be um, to be safe. Um... And, and, you know, some more practical advice is that first thing is keep everything anonymous. Uh, anything that you're publishing publicly, keep it anonymous. That's number one. Um, and then number two is that that right now your app w has zero users conceivably, right? And so right now, I think I think what David cautioned about is fair. But like by the time you by the time your app becomes so big that, you know, you you are running into um, a lot of legal issues. So you know, I'm just, I'm just giving the other side of the caution is that don't let that stop you from innovating either, because by the time your app becomes really popular, you may actually have the resources, or you know, e even even a pro bono lawyers who will actually help you get you know get all the kind of dot the i's and uh, dash the t's or whatever, but cross the t's. So so I think don't let that stop your innovation. But but in general, if you keep everything anonymous. Um, and don't violate people's privacy. I think that you know you'll you, you'll tend to be uh, okay. Um, so and, that's my legal advice for you. <laughs> okay, okay. And I uh, you didn't hear that from me. It's not official full stack <laughs> advice. All right, that's um, not official but full stack advice. Um, also, if you're a full stack alum, can we cut that or, out of the feed later, or is this live? <laughs> it's live. It's live. Okay, we'll cut it. Cut it in post. Um, okay. If you're a full stack student, full stack alum. Uh, I don't. Th I think right now we're a little bit offset from the actual capstone times that most students are working on. But if you want to work, if you want us to find you a partner, if you want to help um, with a group, you know, with other full stack grads, email COVID capstone at fullstackacademy.com, and we will um, kind of host separate things for people who are interested in helping. Now, you know, I think it's um, it's great just to help out on the main helpwithcovid.com site, and let me. Um, but sometimes it's, you know, it's nice to work with people that, that you're kind of, you share something, uh, in common with. So that's, that's why we're also offering that, uh, separately. So helpwithcovid.com is the site that we're going to be looking at and I'll start, you know, I would, I would say that let's give a quick intro to the site. Uh, let me share that site application window. So this is the helpwithcovid.com site. As you can see, it um, it basically is a I've created a profile. 
it's basically a site where people can post project ideas and then volunteer for those projects, right? So for example, this one is a Git-based collaboration platform. Uh, 44 people have volunteered. Now, I don't think it takes that much to volunteer. So you don't know, I don't really know how many, um, how much interest is, behind, how much activity is actually happening behind each one. If you want to do it, oftentimes these people will have a way to get in touch, get in touch and say, hey, look, I have these skill sets. I want to help. Um, there's a way for us to work. And so, um, Yes, so that's the site. Any, any, um, chicken leg, any questions or comments, people, so far? Anyone working on something COVID related or thinking about it? All right, let me open up so we can see the comments. All right. Okay. All right. So why don't we start with some of our product ideas? Yeah. Cool. So the, the first one, um, the first category that I think, so we have five categories. Um, and I'll start with the first category. Uh, let's see. We'll call this crowdsourced. Um, crowdsourced wellness and help. So if I show my screen here, I'll give you some examples of projects in that space. So, let me go to screen share mode. So these are examples of projects that I think would be great for our students to um, to work on. And, and, we, and there are a lot of students who work on projects like this. And basically the idea would be a marketplace of people who want to help with people who, who need help. So uh, let's see, this one and this one are my two favorite. So you see, like, like, I look at projects like this, right? It has 400 volunteers. Um, it's not it's not, it doesn't seem to be that active, right? So, and I think that one thing to think about too is that these will pop up in a lot of different places. So I wouldn't, I would, um, I wouldn't worry too much that like, I wouldn't worry too much about the concern in your head that like, hey, if I don't help this one, this, it will never happen. I think, you know, yeah. feel free to, to help out or work on your own, right? So this is, I think that's the most simple version um, I would, the most simple thing I, I would consider here is is you know what I would start with, I would start with helping out um, buildings in Manhattan and give them something that they can I would try to contact those buildings so each building usually has a um, you know it's, it's tough because you can't really canvas a neighborhood right now but I would go to those buildings um, either go to their website try to get in touch with them uh, or even consider mailing them something where they can post something up in their lobby where they can really start simple with something as a um, texting a phone number that would um, have a question flow about who are you, what do you need, uh, or do you want to help? Um, and, and then really just almost like have the matching initially done um, via text um, almost by hand. I, I don't know, do you, do you have thoughts on how you would kind of build something like this is kind of the most simple, simple method? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that um, I think the the way that you get it to grow, whether it's through um, buildings or, you know, you can contact um, there are actually several nonprofits who who are specifically focused on helping the the elderly and especially the, the more vulnerable elderly. So I think, you know, once you have something built, they would be more than happy to uh, get that out to their people. Um, what I would focus on more at first, actually, is to get the volunteers lined up. So let's say you probably you probably know a lot of your friends and, you know, like young folks who, you know, maybe who do have access to some PPE, some protective equipment who are ready to help. Right. So let's say you get 10 of you together. Then I think you'll have no problem finding the people who need uh, need assistance with this. And so I, I, I would start with that. Um, I would start with that. 
uh, that approach. Um, once words, word gets out, I, I would bet you that the problem you're going to face is more that you will have too much, uh, too many requests, and you're going to need to work work harder to to, to fill it. Because um, right now, um, the few things I've heard from other other startups that have that have tried this in other countries is that they're they are uh, overwhelmed with the amount of um, just the, the 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 amount of help people need, especially the uh, elderly. I, I wonder if you could also uh, actually, you know, instead of your buildings, another good place to get this out word out about it would be grocery stores, because actually everybody is going to them, and grocery stores are definitely open, right? And I think they're also most of them are actually looking to uh, actually, you know, create good solutions to help. Uh, people who are more vulnerable. So that that's another uh, location. Yeah. Now that you mention it, you're right. That's much better to, um, you know, most grocery stores might have like a bulletin board where you can post something because uh, they're yeah. putting it there. Like, look, do you want to help out? Or do you um, to get your volunteers? Um, and then, um, or if you need help, you know, we can um, we can we can help you out with this. All right. I think yeah. This is a let's see. This one is another one similar. Help next door. See how far this one has come along. Okay. So you see, it's you know, these, these sites are early in their work, but it's um, yeah. Should we talk about the um, the next category? Yeah. Well, it's pretty cool. People are, people are starting to. I'll say this is this is a pretty good early start. So um, definitely a project that I think is. Uh, cool to help out with or to to create and something that is and, uh, and 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 the project we're showing over there dave that's a great example of what i was talking about earlier is that it, it doesn't need to look like like the greatest thing off of the you know um like like some amazing design school the rhode island school of design like uh approved design it just needs to work right now um yeah. and i think you know that that is actually more than sufficient uh to get it out of the door um, but yeah. anyway, so next topic that uh, I want to talk about um, is uh, the the whole category of info site, uh, info sites, dashboards, basically helping people get information faster. Um, this whole category has been so important in the past uh, couple months because. Um, we noticed that you know there's just so many people out there. This thing is impacting so many people, and to get the right information out to every single person is such a big deal. Um, and if you build a good dashboard, it can really, really change someone's perspective completely about this whole thing, right? Like I think a lot of times um, people see people hear different uh, news, but when they see like the right dashboard, it's really telling. And um, one example I actually saw just in a um, this is not even an app. It's just a um, a uh, a news article that I saw. Um, which let me actually just uh, send it to David, and maybe he can he can bring it up. But but um, so so this article it just shows the uh, in the New York City zip codes it shows the the number of tested and uh, and positives. Uh, in, in, in the New York City zip codes. And just looking at it is actually very telling uh, compared to, you know, all we see earlier are we see just like numbers uh, of like for the entire city, right? Or the entire state, um, which are, you know, which we don't know what's going on. You, you look at something like this, suddenly you, you know exactly uh, where you are, what's going on, what places need the most help, which hospitals are probably the most overburdened. Um, so it, it's just it just gives you so much more information. Uh, so a, a good dashboard can do a lot. Um, there there are already a number of examples for um, for for really good dashboards. Um, I think um, one approach that you can do actually, which I, I've I've also really liked, is to build developer tools for to help other developers build good dashboards. Like imagine if you build a really good API that has clean data. That is updated regularly, and you actually open that up to uh, other developers to build and designers to build uh, information. I think that's a really cool approach, uh, which can uh, which can be really helpful as well. Um, right now, just the just like data, there's like data quality right now is a problem, right? And so I think if you build algorithms to scrape data and massage it well, and build a nice API on top of it, um, I think that can be great. Um, Dave, you want to pull up some of the some of the example projects uh, we have in yeah. this category? I like this one a lot. Um, 
getting tested, finding testing sites. Um, this is a good, right? Like finding um, places that you can get tested, help having good search. Um, this is a project that I think is pretty cool. This one is interesting too. I think this is a, this is an intersection of a lot of interesting. I think you're you're not sharing your screen. Oh. Are you intending to? Yes. There you go. So I like this one. Uh, help build a database of testing centers. So this one is um, this is a project that I think would be pretty good for um, for people to work on, both collecting them. Um, Having a way to search them, collect, uh, having people waiting for people to update or provide crowdsourced information about testing uh, testing centers. Because um, to be honest, like right now, you know, looking into this, they're not. It's not obvious like where the best place to get tested, except for going to the hospital. But I think a lot of places are opening up uh, with options. You know, another um, idea around this. I'm not sure if we've seen it in the Help with COVID site, but it's just a fact checking site around different COVID posts, articles, forwards, um, news, all kinds. I mean, there's people are saying, you know, all kinds of stuff out there. Um, it would be really great to have, you know, I'm sure you're all familiar with the Snopes website um, where, you know, they just kind of fact check uh, various forwards and rumors and stuff like that that are that are flying around. And so building something like that, that um, this is more just about data curation, I guess it's not that much like software development, but um, I think you would have to get uh, an expert um, on board as well who helps you actually do the fact checking. But yeah, I think that'd be useful. It's a tough one. It's like it's like fact checking sites themselves oftentimes get, um, you know, I mean, how do you establish the credibility of the fact checking site? It's always a problem of of if you're going to rely on a third party who, who verifies that third party. Um, yeah, I mean, I think you 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 need to get an expert on board. The, the problem is that the experts are busy right now. It's like yeah. it's not easy to get an expert right now who has nothing to do. <laughs> um, uh, this is another one I I really like um, in terms of tracking different regulations in effect across across the country, right? Mm -hmm. Like, um, what are the quarantine rules? What are the orders that are you know? So right now, that's. If you, if I want to find out what's going on in New York and Florida, you go to different websites. You, you're reading different news articles, and it's not it's not always clear what um, what's going on and what the most recent information is. So I think having a, a crowdsource site that was attaching kind of both the map with a with the most recent legal news is a really interesting idea, um, especially for people who are um, you know looking out for their family, considering places to travel to, considering places to. Um, you know, if they want to relocate, um, definitely something that uh, we'll find interesting. This project seems pretty early on, uh, looking at policy researchers um, and then web developers using tools that most uh, most people who are kind of familiar with implementing maps would have experience with. Nice. All right, the uh, third category of projects Let's see. Third part of the Nima, do you want to? Um, actually, you know, I, th I can talk about this one. Yeah. Um, is helping people with the social isolation that they're facing right now. I think this is a, a new thing for all of us to spend so much time with our family. You know, it's something, it's something you dream about. And then when you see the reality, it's as good as everyone said it would be. <laughs> um, and so the. Um, how do we handle social isolation um, from each other? And you know, today I was in a Zoom meeting with people from work, and I almost cheered up thinking how much I enjoyed talking to them because uh, you know I haven't seen their faces for so long. So um, this is a problem that I think I actually have myself. Um, and so and, you know, there's a lot of people looking at kind of adult virtual uh, adult social isolation. This and this idea I've seen a thousand times as a startup idea, but I think now is actually a time when something like this might work. And this is a um, virtual play dates for children during COVID-19. So um, really, the, I mean, I have, um, I one time got a proposal for a capstone project called Tinder for Tots. And I was like, that's just terrible in so many ways, but this, this would be kind of like that, right? How do you, um, so I, I have two young kids and they have their school organized um, 
their school organized classroom sessions where they're all in a Zoom room. So it's funny because like this morning I was in a Zoom meeting, my son was in a Zoom meeting, and my two year old daughter was in a Zoom meeting. And um, it's fun, right? Because they get to kind of see everybody, they get to hear each other's stories. But um, if you look at children at play, they oftentimes are only interacting with one other kid, right? And so to take away all that kind of one on one interaction and replace it with only group interaction through Zoom, it is a big shock for, for young kids. And so having a way for, for parents to register, hey, my child's interested in these kind of topics, um, we're available at these times, just make random matches. It's, it doesn't have to be that uh, high fidelity because the two kids who are both interested in Star Wars or who are both interested in trains or Thomas Tank Engine, that would be a lot of fun for them to have just that one friend to meet up with. So kind of in between, look, we're going to make a permanent friend and something like chat roulette where it's just like flipping to random people. Right? Can we find yeah. um, the 15 things young kids are interested in at different age groups? And I'll tell you, for like, for, for at least for boys, it'll be like trains, um, rockets, you know, basic stuff, right? And just have she was like, I'm I'm four years old. I'm interested in these things, and then meet me, match me with someone who's interested in this stuff. So I think this is a thing that would probably never work because would never work in any normal other time because kids have their friends, they have their play dates all set up. But right now, all that stuff's been broken, and especially for kids in New York. Everyone's everywhere right now, so even or it's impossible to arrange play dates, not only because of isolation, but just because no one is in the same area. So this is an idea I really like. I think this can be done a thousand different ways, and all those ways can be interesting. Um, I would reach out to, to parent groups on Facebook. There's groups like, um, you know, if you look for a city comma mamas or city comma parents you'll find thousands of these groups where parents are talking about all this kind of stuff so you can get a lot of users pretty quickly to try it out any yeah. other thoughts on social I mean, I, apps that you like are yeah i mean I, I don't know if it's just for kids either i feel like a lot of adults are also um facing some social isolation i mean i think you know if if you're lucky then you're with your family at least and um but you know, I, I I do know a lot of our our full stack team members are actually, um, you know, like they they kind of live on their own in New York. And if you're if you're just staying at home um, and you're not able to go see anyone, you're not going outside that much. So I think you know the, the, there's actually room for interesting uh, apps just to let people meet each other as well. Um, I don't want to go too far with this, but maybe there's a maybe there's a COVID online dating app. Where you could actually meet meet some people in, under isolation and actually get to know them a little more than, um, you know, get to know the person, get to know their eyes a little more. Um, yeah, and so, so yeah, I, I'm I'm sure that there are some more more playful uh, <laughs> apps that are that that are definitely possible here. Um, I would also say that you know these kinds of things, it may actually stretch well beyond the COVID crisis as well, because I think. Um, this this crisis is bringing about a change in our society just around the way that we're going to work uh, in the future, and it, it may you know it may have some broad changes in in the in, in the places that people live, the tools we use, and the ways we work. So um, there's a lot of interesting uh, opportunities in that space. Yeah, I, I agree. I think you know once once you kind of get into this is. Um, or the opportunity here is that this is really forcing a lot of new behaviors and some of those new new behaviors are going to stick right and so i think that that you know um there's a chance to build something that could help people now and then also um be part of that new behavior yeah absolutely yeah um so I got a comment from um from mystified um about the virtual play dates it's like a good use case for web rtc yeah I, I agree web rtc um there's a site called uh, talkbox.com. Uh, I'll put it here. They have a, a pretty easy way to set up um, WebRTC. Basically, is if you want to build something like Zoom or like StreamYard, uh, well, WebRTC is a way to get high speed connect between two browsers um, rather than having to um, rather than having to have a, like a dedicated client or use kind of Flash plugins and um, yeah, the talk boxes are pretty easy to, I would say, you know, a couple of lines to get two people doing web chat together. I mean, doing something yeah. more like Zoom would be more complicated, but yeah, that's where I would, uh, I would definitely start there. So thanks for the comment, Permissified. So the the 
The next category we have is around uh, commerce. Uh, I, I think broadly you describe it as commerce, but also just um, interaction, you know, some kind of um, exchange between people for, for various things. It doesn't have to be for money necessarily, but um, so I think that, that uh, one, one app uh, that we really love here, uh, Dave, if you want to bring up safe uh, slot, um, is this idea that right now, you know, if you're if you're in an area that's impacted by COVID, or I, I guess almost everybody is at this point, um, but you know, and you've gone to a grocery store, most grocery stores, at least around where we live in New York, um, they are limiting the number of people that can uh, go go there. And what ends up happening is that there are these really long lines outside of these stores. And the lines themselves, they're always uncomfortable, right, Dave, to stand in. You're like standing in these lines and you're wondering that, am I beating the purpose of this store limiting me? Because like this line itself is like uh, kind of everybody. And so I, I wish I could just take a number somehow and then go sit in my car and then just get a ping that, okay, now you can go in, right? Um, and then like if your phone could even, s I mean, ideally this this um, this app that you could build, so, so this project here is called Safe Slot. Um, which would be kind of like taking a number. It could also have your GPS where if, if you decide to just drive off and you're not waiting anymore in the parking lot, like it could kind of automatically remove you from from the line. Um, and it would be a re really simple solution to, to just eliminate these really long lines. You could also go do something else for, you know, for a bit. You could go fill up gas or something if they don't have that GPS type of restriction. So, so I think, you know, it... Take a look at the safe slot app. Uh, the, the the folks who are building it right now are building it for India. Um, and so I think there is an opportunity for you to build something similar for uh, either in the US or you know any other country that, that you're interested in. I think sometimes countries have their own nuances with the way people use things. They have own uh, customizations, own languages. Um, I think for this to succeed, you definitely would need participation from, uh, from a, uh, a grocery store, right? Um, I, I would bet you though that uh, the store I've seen this doing this most often, at least in my area, is Trader Joe's, um, and they 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 tend to really be innovative about these solutions. So I think um, I, I think you know if you go to if you go to your local Trader Joe's, talk to the manager, and you make it really easy for them to start using this. Um, I could bet you that they'll consider doing it because I don't think any I, I, and um, I, I don't think they love the lines because. The lines not only are dangerous health-wise, they also turn away a lot of potential customers for them, right? Because yeah. like I go there, I see this crazy line. I'm like, I, I, I sometimes I just go back, right? And like maybe, maybe I'll go to another another shop, right? But instead, if I could just take a number and they tell me, okay, estimated wait time fifteen minutes, somehow that doesn't feel as long as a really long line does, right? And so I think it could also help them. You could make that argument to them that hey, this will actually help keep people waiting to come to your store. So, so uh, yeah, I think, you know, uh, in the commerce side, that's one app we really like. Um, do you, you, you want to contact tracing? Well, this one is just, um, I experienced this several times today too, where you're, I, I was at a store um, trying to get like a, a Spectrum Time Warner store. And, you know, they only let four people in the store at one time. But then all of a sudden, all they do is they offset, they push everyone to the, out, the outside. And um, you know they say stay outside, social distance. But you're you know, in the line. It's hard to social distance because it's kind of a line that compresses naturally. So I think it's one of those things where um, I would much prefer to have wait wait in my car. And what I find interesting about this problem is that I, this is a problem that I don't think exists post COVID crisis. But I do think that right now you might see adoption, very quick adoption, because how business is penalty is that they just have to put somebody at the door, keeping it closed. And yeah. kind of orchestrating the line, right? If they go to your site, print out something that lets them, like, hey, go to, you know, safe slot dot whatever slash wait dash cafe or wait that this number. And I can just go there, get in line. They'll tell me about the approximate wait time. Uh, and I can go wait someplace safely. I think people might, even someone at a big store might print that out just to help themselves, right? So you could get like, um, I saw that Best Buy had built something like this. And to me, Best Buy building something like this is pretty, uh, it's a good sign that companies um, would, use it. Because, would use it. Because Best Buy has a good development team, but most retail, it's very hard for them to build something like this that quickly. So yeah. I like the, we like this idea a lot. I think it's something that you could actually get, for example, like CVS, you would never in a million years sell this to CVS um, in normal times, right? But you can imagine right now, 
a pharmacist themselves might download your app and put it just in their pharmacy counter inside of CVS. And um, you get that effect of, they call it like uh, B to C to B, right? Where people are bringing in technologies into the businesses that they run because it's so helpful to them. So like Zoom, for example, is a great example of that, right? Zoom, Zoom was so successful because people brought in Zoom to companies regardless of whether or not the company was paying for it because it was so powerful for them. Yeah. All right. The um, the other idea I like in this too is um, is uh, the purchase Contact planning is. calculator. Oh, okay. Let me load that oh, Okay, okay, yeah. Because when, the one reason I like this is because I think most people are not preppers, right? And since they don't think about disaster planning, and that's um, that's because in America we haven't really gone through a disaster and probably at least a full scale disaster since I don't know World War Two maybe, right? Because I think about um, and so. So in short, Americans don't know how to prepare for disasters. So I think this is a really cool idea of, and so I think what a lot of people are doing now is like they're buying all the toilet paper. And it's like, I mean, I don't want to reveal too much about myself, but I'm like, if worse came to worse and I ran out of toilet paper, there's other solutions than using toilet paper, right? Um, and so I think people are doing that because they probably it just see other people buying toilet paper, like I'll buy some toilet paper too, right? And so um, the site like this is to help people build calculators for what they actually need to buy to be prepared. So you can say, look, I have two adults, two kids. Um, I want, want to eat this amount of food. I want to do this amount of stuff. Um, what are the things I should buy? And then yeah. you can load that right into an Instacart order, right into a Amazon order. Um, I think I almost, I can think of it a few ways, right? Like the wire cutter for preparation. I can think of it as um, just helping people kind of know what to buy that makes sense, right? Not to overload because otherwise they're just loading stuff into their cart that we're actually probably creating a ton of food waste in this country right now because, you know, unless we actually see food supply shocks, buying all the stuff, most of it's going to spoil, we're never going to use it, um, et cetera. So, um, yeah, so I, I like this idea as, as well as helping people buy what they need to buy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think the... Uh... Uh, I guess some stores could help us enforce like uh, not, you know, people not um, hoarding stuff too. I think some of them are trying that. It's it's a little hard because, uh, you know, the store's incentives are not necessarily aligned with stopping people from buying stuff. Um, and so so it's a little harder. Um, I was at a Costco. Back in the 80s, I was like, huh? I was like if a store tells me like, Everyone else is buying this, so you're limited. I'm like, oh crap! I need to be buying a lot of that. So I think yeah. um, I saw like, anything they tell now. you not to buy a lot of. You're like, <laughs> probably everybody wants this. Um, um, one thing I was going to say that, uh, is that there's no returns on yeah. a lot of stuff now, right? So like, you can't return toilet paper, mm -hmm. Lysol. So that I think makes sense, right? Because like people buy a lot and they they take advantage of the generous return policy. So I think that's the, probably the way the best way to handle it. It's like, look, any toilet paper bought between this date, you just can't return it. Yeah. I think that the um, uh, I, I used to so I, I actually w when I was a, a child I lived in uh, India in the eighties and, and you know in, in in India in the eighties we had various economic policies that caused kind of massive uh, scarcity of all kinds of basic goods right and so we had these rationing cards for even buying grain buying vegetables buying fruit like you know buying anything from the uh, so like you know this would be a government issued card that would tell that would basically you know be based on how many family members you have and so like as a family you couldn't buy more than a certain amount of anything every month um and you know because there was so much scarcity this just helped uh help government uh ration stuff out and of course it, it was you know it, it ended up being a terrible system because there was tons of corruption and all that but but like i could see that if this goes on for a long time like there could be some um there could be some way that it would be like a coordinated way to enforce how much people can buy. But I mean, you know, as soon as I start thinking about it, it's, it's actually hard to imagine that happening in the U S but, um, but yeah, those are the government solutions for this problem that, um, you never know, right? Like yeah, yeah. rationing is the other end of no, um, of supply demand shocks, right? So you can't, yeah. if, you know, the more, um, and, and I'm against the like, I'm for the price gouging laws to begin with because I think it, it 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 even though economically I would say it probably makes sense but morally it just feels like a 
um, an attack kind of on our shared or our shared like our shared bond. empathy or like our, our like um yeah but the other side of, of price yeah. of banning price gouging is rationing right it's like you, you get one or the other um, yeah yeah so here's a here's the last a app idea that i think is really cool i don't know i don't know how possible it is but um but the singapore i think open open source this app um called Let's Trace, and basically it's a contact tracing app using uh, Bluetooth um, Bluetooth radio. So, um, I don't know if you're, if you're familiar, but our, the doors that we have at Full Stack, they have this little device on them. That yeah, when using they detect, proxy, right? Yeah. Yeah, when they detect your Bluetooth radio in proximity, they will actually send in a, they will actually be able to track that fact that you're close to this door and they open the door for you automatically, right? So it's like contactless, um contactless door opening so you don't have to like you know put your little card up there now what this is is um what singapore does is in my understanding i have looked at this deeply is that they actually will trace all the people that your phone gets in touch with and so then if a coronavirus uh diagnosis is positive they can really quickly tell who you were with in the last you know amount of time that you, that you might have had it um this is incredible i mean it's it's Contact tracing does seem to me like, or does appeal to me as the way to reopen up society without, um, the, way, the way to reopen society and and hammer down on small outbreaks, right? Because I think obviously we're not going to get full, we're going to need to be doing something because there'll be little pop-ups here and there, right? So this is a cool yeah. app. I don't know, like for, I think one thing people could be doing here is different proofs of concept to understand what is, um, you know, what what is possible and how people will perceive that impact on their privacy, right? Because many times students want to build things like, hey, I'm going to party and I connect with someone that I might have connected with in the past and my phone alerts me that this person's here, right? And so these kind of things are um, are possible, it's are, are not possible and people might be, um, I think as a, we're going to have to understand as an American culture, what people are going to be into I think eventually something, someone like the government probably needs to put out this app officially, right? Through Apple and Google. But um, having a few different ideas and prototypes in the market it will be interesting to see, hey, this is actually how people will think about their privacy in this kind of environment. So it's an interesting idea. I don't think I don't think a team of four people is gonna actually build the contact tracing app that America adopts because it's too important to um, not have the government make it a big project. Um, but I, I mean, think it's, 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 a, it's a tricky um, topic. Um, I see Bill asking uh, in the comments about um, what we're verifying, but we, I, I guess we, we, we would be verifying the um, whether you're positive, uh, COVID positive, and then who you were around uh, during you know various times of the day uh, after you were positive, and then being able to track kind of where those people went and um how how you interacted with everyone and like it, it would allow us to to um isolate people much more quickly um but i think that the the trouble is is that you know unfortunately it is a huge violation of people's privacy for the you know for work yeah to, to 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 make it work the way that it needs to work is that like everybody um you know i think secretly i think that they're already doing that anyway i think they just don't want to <laughs> so i feel like if they're secretly already doing it why don't they just use it to um, like, maybe I just got a secret text. Like, Hey, somebody you were around today was infected. So you need to get tested. Right. And like, don't, don't tell me who, where, what, um, just, uh, just that, you know, I, I need to get tested. I think that would be good. Um, I, I don't know exactly how to think about it though. I think it's a, it, it's a topic that does need a little more. Um, I feel like it needs more thinking than the amount of time we have right now. Right. Like we need this, like right now, ideally yeah um but all right so those are our uh five ideas for apps that we think people who are full stack students or full stack alums would be well suited to, to take on and could really make an impact in the community and if you're interested in those we would love to be you know mentors or help out and how we can to make this successful um 
to make this a successful project for you. Um, and so again, if you're interested, email covidcapstone at fullstackacademy.com and we'll connect you with the team. Just say what what general category I'm interested in working on, um, how much time I have is something that I can do full-time, something I'm doing as a student project, something I'm doing kind of part-time because I'm fully employed. And, and we'll set up the teams that, that we can. And, um, and then the final message I would say to people is that this is a trying time for everyone. I mean, I think this is, um, it's not business as normal for a lot of people. Like, I mean, you know, there'll be people who are going through um, health scares and people who are just adjusting to new situations. So we're not saying like, look, you have to go out and do this. Like this is what, you know, all this, you have all this free time, go do something. I think this is what we're trying to, what we're trying to put out there is, um, we have a lot of people interested in helping. Here's some ways that we, I think as programmers we can we can contribute to the effort, and um, but don't feel like this is um, don't feel like you have to be doing something productive in this time. I mean, a lot of people are just um, just focused on holding it together. So we definitely understand that as well. And um, and yeah, you know, we want everyone out there to stay stay safe, stay healthy, um, stay stay as right positive on. as you can. I'll say that you know th th this is one of those times where. You, you, if you think about it from your perspective, you only have something to gain to try to help people right now. Um, you know, you gain personal satisfaction. Uh, you may end up learning a lot just by, you know, working with other talented people to build, um, build something, push it out quickly. Um, worst case, nobody uses it or you're never able to finish. Uh, best case, you help a ton of people. You know, if your app becomes really popular, um, you know, maybe you, you stumble upon an idea that you can actually capitalize on after, the crisis. Uh, so, you know, mostly it's, it's all gain, it's all gain for you. And, and I, I've also find that when you are, uh, isolated, you're kind of sitting around in a place like having something really motivating, something that other people are interested in being involved. Uh, it, it really increases your happiness. It, it also keeps your mind, uh, fresh. And, um, and yeah, so I, you know, I, 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 uh, I hope you, uh, decide to try one of these ideas. We, we'd love to support you. Um, and we'd love to, um, be able to, you know, use the the collective talent that we've created in the full stack community to, you know, to some good use to to help the communities that we live in. So, all right, thanks so much, everyone, and uh, check out next check you out next time, and uh, look forward to seeing what people are working on. Thank you.